Bienvenidos al Medical Spanish Podcast. Soy la doctora Molly Merton. Through this podcast, I provide interactive audio lessons that teach practical Spanish for healthcare and elsewhere. The level of this lesson is upper intermediate and timestamps are provided in the show notes. The lessons offered at docmolly.com are solely for learning Spanish. They are not intended to teach medicine or provide medical advice. Welcome to our fifth lesson, adapted from an invaluable communication guide provided by vitaltalk.org. This guide provides practical advice about how to discuss difficult topics around COVID-19. To learn more, click on the link in your show notes. In this lesson, we are going to practice notifying someone by phone that their loved one has passed away. I hope you find this lesson useful, but I also hope you do not have to have many conversations like this as you take care of patients with COVID. I myself will be returning to work in the hospital this week, and I'm in Minnesota where we are seeing a record number of cases. But I am hopeful because we have learned a lot about how to best treat patients with COVID, and we are seeing a decreased rate of death. We can do this but we must curb the spread so we do not overwhelm our hospitals. Therefore, wear a mask, avoid hanging out with people indoors who you do not live with, and remember, even people who appear perfectly healthy can be infected with COVID and spread it. Okay, now it's time to learn some Spanish. As always, as we practice interpreting this interaction, we'll break down the grammar, and I'll refer to related lessons in the show notes. Y antes de empezar, quiero dar las gracias a Elizabeth Cortez, mi profesora de español de la San Pedro Spanish School, who helped me with the Spanish for this lesson. Listos? Empecemos. Listen as a doctor calls a family member to inform her that her father has passed away from complications of COVID-19. Escuchemos el diálogo. Hola, buenas noches. Soy la doctora Elizabeth Cortés. ¿Estoy hablando con la hija del señor Francisco Álvarez? Sí, soy su hija. Soy la doctora que atiende a su padre. Quisiera hablarle sobre un asunto grave. ¿Se encuentra en un lugar donde pueda hablar? Bueno, estoy a cinco horas de distancia. ¿Qué ocurre? ¿Pasó algo? Estoy amando por su padre. Falleció hace poco tiempo por complicaciones de COVID-19. ¡Ah! Oh, ¡No puede ser! Mis condolencias para usted y su familia. Tómese su tiempo. Estoy aquí. Sabía que esto iba a suceder, pero no creí que sucedería tan rápido. Imagino lo impactante que ha de ser esto para usted. Es muy triste. Lo siento mucho. Interpreta Hello, good evening. I am Dr. Elizabeth Cortez. Hola, buenas noches. Soy la doctora Elizabeth Cortez. So note how buenas noches, good evening or good night, is used as a greeting in Spanish. Hola, buenas noches. And we use a definite article, in this case, la before our title when introducing ourselves in Spanish. Soy la doctora Elizabeth Cortez. Am I speaking with Mr. Francisco Alvarez's daughter? Estoy hablando con la hija del señor Francisco Alvarez. And here again, she uses the definite article in this case, el, before the title, señor. Estoy hablando con la hija del señor Francisco Álvarez. Interpreta. Yes, I'm his daughter. Sí, soy su hija. Interpreta al inglés. Soy la doctora que atiende a su padre. I am the doctor caring for your father. So what verb did she use to say to care for? Atender. Ahora, interpreta. I am the doctor caring for your father. Soy 
Soy la doctora que atiende a su padre. Note how we do not use the gerund atendiendo here. En español, nunca se usa el gerundio como adjetivo. Therefore, the doctor caring for your father is interpreted as la doctora que atiende a su padre. And remember to use the personal a before padre. Soy la doctora que atiende a su padre. Interpreta al inglés. Quisiera hablarle sobre un asunto grave. I would like to talk to you about a serious matter. So how did she say, I would like? Quisiera. So you can use the imperfect subjunctive of the verb querer to say, I want, in a more polite way. I would like. Quisiera. Matter. El asunto. Serious. Grave. Interpreta. I would like to talk to you about a serious matter. Quisiera hablarle sobre un asunto grave. So here le refers to the patient. Quisiera hablarle. She could have also said, Quisiera hablar con usted. Interpreta al inglés. ¿Se encuentra en un lugar donde pueda hablar? Are you in a place where you can talk? And here she uses the subjunctive to describe un lugar because she does not know where the daughter is and whether that place is somewhere she can talk. ¿Se encuentra en un lugar donde pueda hablar? And what verb does she use to ask about the daughter's location? Encontrarse. Interpreta. Are you in a place where you can talk? ¿Se encuentra en un lugar donde pueda hablar? Interpreta al inglés. Bueno, estoy a cinco horas de distancia. Well, I'm five hours away. So here, how does she say away? De distancia. And when expressing the distance you are away from something, you use the preposition a. Estoy a cinco horas de distancia. How would you say, I am two miles from the hospital? Estoy a dos millas del hospital. Interpreta. Well, I'm five hours away. Bueno, estoy a cinco horas de distancia. Interpreta al inglés. ¿Qué ocurre? ¿Pasó algo? What's going on? Did something happen? Y ahora, interprétalo al español. What's going on? Did something happen? ¿Qué ocurre? ¿Pasó algo? Interpreta. I'm calling about your father. Estoy llamando por su padre. And note the use of the preposition por here. Estoy llamando por su padre. Interpreta al inglés. Falleció. Hace poco tiempo por complicaciones de COVID-19. He passed away a short time ago from complications of COVID-19. How did she say to pass away? 
fallecer. A short time ago. Hace poco tiempo. Interpreta. He passed away a short time ago from complications of COVID-19. Falleció hace poco tiempo por complicaciones de COVID-19. Note the use of the preposition por to say from or due to complications of COVID-19. Falleció hace poco tiempo por complicaciones de COVID-19. Interpreta, it can't be. No puede ser. Interpreta al inglés. Mis condolencias para usted y su familia. My condolences to you and your family. How do you say condolences? Las condolencias. Interpreta. My condolences to you and your family. Mis condolencias para usted y su familia. And note the use of the preposition para to say to you and your family. Mis condolencias para usted y su familia. How would you say this to a friend? My condolences to you and your family. Mis condolencias para ti y tu familia. Interpreta al inglés. Tómese su tiempo. Estoy aquí. Take your time. I'm here. This is a rare example where Spanish favors redundancy and we use a reflexive verb, tomarse, with a possessive adjective, su. Tómese su tiempo. How would you tell a friend, take your time? Tómate tu tiempo. Now speaking to the patient, interpreta, take your time, I'm here. Tómese su tiempo, estoy aquí. Interpreta al inglés, sabía que esto iba a suceder, pero no creí que sucedería tan rápido. I knew this was going to happen, but I didn't think it would happen so quickly. So what verb did she use to say to happen? Suceder. So far, we've used three different verbs that mean to happen. Pasar, ocurrir, y suceder. And she uses a variety of verb tenses here. Let's break it down. First, she uses the imperfect tense of the verb saber to express possessing knowledge of something as opposed to discovering something in the moment. I knew that, sabía que, and she uses the imperfect tense of ir, iba, to say was going to happen, iba a suceder. Sabía que esto iba a suceder. She then uses the preterite of the verb creer and the conditional of the verb suceder to say, I did not think it would happen so rapidly. Pero no creí que sucedería tan rápido. So she used the preterite tense to say, no creí, because she is referring to something that she did not think in the past, but now knows to be true. No creí que sucedería tan rápido. And she follows no creí with the conditional, rather than the subjunctive, because she is referring to something in the past that actually did occur. No creí que sucedería tan rápido. And finally, we use rápido, the short form of the adverb rápidamente, to say quickly. Interpreta, I knew this was going to happen, but I didn't think it would happen so quickly.
Sabía que esto iba a suceder, pero no creí que sucedería tan rápido. Interpreta al inglés. Imagino lo impactante que ha de ser esto para usted. I imagine how shocking this must be for you. How does she say shocking? Impactante. How shocking? Lo impactante. So we use the neuter pronoun lo followed by an adjective, in this case impactante, to say how shocking. Lo impactante. How did she say this must be? Ha de ser esto. And of course, you could turn that word order around and say esto ha de ser. It is very common to use the construction haber de to express probability. Ahora, interpreta. I imagine how shocking this must be for you. Imagino lo impactante que ha de ser esto para usted. And you could also use the pronominal verb imaginarse here to say to imagine. Using imaginarse and addressing a friend, how would you say, I imagine how shocking this must be for you. Me imagino lo impactante que ha de ser esto para ti. Interpreta. It's very sad. I'm very sorry. Es muy triste. Lo siento mucho. And that wraps up today's free lesson. Now, to solidify what we just learned, click on the link in your show notes to take a quiz. And for those who aren't members yet, for a limited time, you can get 20% off your membership after you take the quiz. Also, don't forget there are links throughout the show notes to lessons covering a lot of the tricky grammar in today's dialogue. Finally, thank you for listening. Gracias a todos. And thank you to everyone who has become a member at docmolly.com. You keep this podcast going. I will have a new lesson for medical Spanish members within the week where we will practice more ways to express sympathy. We also have a series of lessons coming up where we will learn how to perform a Dix Hall Pike and Epley maneuver in Spanish to diagnose and treat benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. I learned so much from creating this series because we go through a lot of vocabulary and phrases for instructing movement. It's a good one. So we have a lot coming up. I will try to share some of what we learn in that premium series through a free lesson as well. Hasta la próxima y cuídense mucho. This is a production of DocMolly.com where you will find interactive audio lessons that teach Spanish for healthcare and elsewhere.